City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Oh, and welcome to another day of working on the cardigan jacket. So, the main part of today is be going to be um, customizing and shaping shoulder pads for this project, but I wanted to show you one more little pattern alteration that I decided to make this morning just because um, I want to make sure before I put the lining in that I get the fit right. And when my daughter was trying on my mock-up, the sleeve seemed too full, okay? And I was watching the video this morning of the Chanel 2000 or 2022-2023 fall winter collection. And I was paying attention to their sleeves and their sleeves are very flat on the outside. They are not curved on the outside. And let me, let me show you the pattern here. So these, these two pieces here, I've actually already cut it, but they were fairly curved. And so what I did is I just put my ruler up at the very top point. I have my, my front and my back layered together at the point that they're matching right here, okay, and pinned together. And so what I did is I just put my ruler at the top point and the point down here where they meet, and I drew a straight line. And that is this line that you can probably see right there, okay? So that's this line. Now, I wanted to leave a little bit of curve, but not a lot. And it was sticking out probably at least another half inch from there. So what I did is I just shaved it off so that the front and the back match. And then I went back onto my actual pieces and I shaved, well, this one I actually have marked. I still need to cut it. Um, but I'm shaving that same amount off so that when I do my lining, I can cut my lining to my new and improved size. So I haven't done that yet. I haven't cut my lining yet, but let me go ahead and just trim this piece here. This is very thick, so I have my dealing with very thick scissors here, you know, as you do. They're serrated. If you ever have serrated scissors, I don't like them for everything, but they do come in handy, that's for sure. Okay, so now this piece is altered, so I am just going to set it away. And we're going to get started on customizing shoulder pads. So I had to start this over because I grabbed my side front. This is my side front lining, and I grabbed my side front. And there is a difference. This notch is not over as far on the lining as it is on this one. And it's, I'm really glad that I saw that here. Um, because I'm going to actually be using this piece to cut out my lining instead of this one, because for the version that I'm making, I need that the correct width. And I can just, you know, finger put in my own dart. I don't need this on there. So I'm putting this away. This is what I will use to cut out my lining. But with that aside, I am going to come back and draw my seam allowance on it. Okay. So now this is the armhole in the back and this is the armhole in the front. And lining up those two along the seam allowance here, that's going to give me the shape of my armhole. All right. So I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on there just to hold it. I can cut my tape off later, but I want to make sure that the edge 
where these two uh, line up that I'm not lining it up here. I'm lining it up actually where those two seam allowances, move that, where they meet together and they're meeting at the very edge. All right. So I'm just going to piece of tape right there just to hold it from moving. So this is giving me the shape. Now I want to show you the options that I have here for shoulder pads. I have two different kinds that I'm looking at. One is made for women and one is made for men. But really it's just a sizing thing. I use men's shoulder pads on women's stuff all the time. So these are the ones that are made for men. And what's nice about this pair is that it's um, layered. If you look in here, there are multiple layers, all right? Well, actually, no, it's not. I thought it was layered. It only has two. It has this layer and then a batting layer. Hmm. I usually like them with several layers, but we can make this work. And so, and it's, but the men's ones are typically longer. Now, I purchased them at half inch because that's what I've been using for a long time. But when I was watching that Chanel show this morning, huge shoulder pads are coming back in. Just letting you know, you know, we can ignore it all we want, but they are coming back in. Anyway, this is the size that is typically for women. So you can see the men's size versus the women's size. The men's size is a lot longer, all right? Now, I also bought this at half inch. But I want to show you, just because it says half inch, when you're putting it into your garment, if, say, one of your shoulders is higher than the other, um, you can make it work. Like these, hang on, let me go get the other one real quick. Okay, so this is that women's shoulder pad as it came out of the package. And, okay, as it came out of the package, it says it's 3 8 inch tall, okay? And yeah, I can kind of see that. And then there's this one, and that looks a lot taller. All right, and the reason is I've been messing with this one. What it is, is a lot of them just have uh, batting in there. Maybe one, maybe two layers of batting, but it's basically batting. And you know, you can pull that apart. So say you have one shoulder that's a quarter inch taller than the other shoulder, but you want your jacket to look like everything is 100% flat, you can mess with it and pull it apart and everything and try to add an extra quarter inch onto one side. So just letting you know all of that. Oh, okay. So this is a, a total diversion and everything, but this one, it doesn't have the little threads. This one is held together by threads, all right? Which is good, which is good, I like that. But it doesn't mean that these are totally out of control. What I do is if I'm pulling apart my shoulder pad and say I want to go full-blown 80s here, you know, and I got, I'm blowing it up into a shoulder pad that's an inch tall, all right? What you can do is, if you've ever um, looked into needle felting as a craft, we used to raise sheep. We had a lot of sheep, and I got into playing with wool. This is a needle felting needle. And see if you can see, there are little sharp barbs. Now, this is as sharp as a scalpel. This will stab you, and it's very, very sharp. But along the edge are little barbs, okay? So if you try to rub it this way, they're going to grab your skin rubbing it this way, nice and smooth, okay? So what I do is, once I get it kind of how I want, I can wrap it just, just to get it shaped back the way I want it. I can wrap it around, and I use a brush because if I stab into the brush, my needle will go through but it won't crush everything. So you can see I'm like shaping it back down and by pushing your felting needle through this, it's going to kind of knit it back together. So see how I pulled it all apart and it's just crazy fat here? Well, I can flatten it even more. And you just put as many, every time you push it through, it's like putting a stitch through it, okay? It's called a felting needle because it'll felt things together. 
So this one I haven't so much, but I've just put a few stitches in there so that it's not as lofty. Now say there's this part here, um, I can just put them across that front piece. And that's going to tame that in, okay? And it's not going to come out because what this does is it interlaces all of those little fibers together, all right? So you can play with it, just be careful. This is what I use, it's just a big old, you know, brush. And everything like that. So those are your options. You have layers and threads. And if you wanted to, if you bought a layered pad and it was way too thick, you can clip off the threads, pull out a layer, put in more basting threads, you know, those work too. So anyhow, next step. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is figure out which side is the front. And it's a little harder with the man shoulder pads because they're almost just a half circle. But if they're shaped at all, one side is skinnier and pointier and the other side is much more rounded, okay? Women are rounded in the front, not so much in the back, you know, boobs and everything. So that's how I remember it. I am round in the front, so the round parts are the fronts. So these are the fronts and these are the backs. So I'm just putting a letter with my heat erasable pen, F on the front, just for right now so that I know that's what I'm dealing with. So setting those aside for right now, what I need to do is make my pattern. And part of choosing if you're using a man's or a women's is you want your shoulder pen to at least come past this point where all the easing is, okay? At least to that point. If you're using a woman's pattern, and you're using a man's shoulder pad, it will definitely go past it, okay? So that's not a big problem. Oh, okay. So on these, I've never used this brand before, but on these, you can see they've put a tiny little notch on here. The notch, if there's a notch on your shoulder pad, that usually indicates where the uh, shoulder seam is. And since I can see that it's much more forward here, that's the front, okay? So if I was to set it, this side would be my front and this would be on my shoulder seam. All right, kind of like that. So there's another thing. These do not have a notch, but because they're shaped, it's kind of obvious of which side is which, but it's up to your discretion where the shoulder seam is going to go. So what I usually do is I just kind of place it on here and I'm going to, on this side, stick a little pin where the shoulder seam is on this side. And it's harder to see right here. Looks like right about there is my shoulder seam on this side. So I'm just gonna leave those little marks there with pins, set this aside for a minute. Okay because I'm planning on using the women's pad, just letting you know. So now there's a few ways to do this. What I like to do is make a separate pattern for my shoulder pad. So I'm getting my spare tissue paper here. And what I'm gonna do is just place it on top, find a pencil or something that will show. Well, there's a pencil. So I'm gonna mark where my little dot is. All right, and then I'm going to draw along the cut edge because I like to place my shoulder pad with along the cut edge that's like poking out into the sleeve. I think it gives it a better shape. So I'm drawing at least to the point where my dot is, probably about an inch further, okay, just for fun. Then what I also need to do is mark this dot up here. You can see. This dot up here, which marks the shoulder seam, I want to make sure that I have that marked, all right? I don't want my shoulder pad to come up this far. I usually, like, say this is a shoulder pad, 
I know I have it on here backwards, but you get the idea. If this is the edge, I want it at least an, an inch away because I'm guiding it gently into that neck. I don't want a big thick thing at the neck. So I'm marking this because that's where the end of my shoulder is, but this is actually, I'm gonna put a curve line. That's where I want the end of my shoulder pad to be. All right, so now I kind of have my shape. So it's this shape here that's most important and this point here. And I'm also going to draw in where my shoulder seam is, okay? So if I move this out of the way, this is what I have. All right, so I just chopped it out of my huge piece so I can work easier. And I am just going to cut it. Oh, you know what else I needed to do? is before I move all this away, mark which side is the front. So I'm going to put a big F on this side and a big B on this side so I know very clearly what's the front and what's the back. Come through here and trim this off. Okay. Now, this is my shoulder pad. This is my front. And this one I have marked. So let me just carry this over. So I'm marking where this pin was. That's where the shoulder seam is there. And where this pin is, that's where it is there. All right. So, oh, here's my ruler. Okay. And this is all my heat erasable pen. I can hit this with my iron and it'll disappear. So I don't mind drawing all over my shoulder pads. So I'm going to transfer these same marks over to this one. So I have them the same. Okay. So I have my two opposite shoulder pads. And now I'm going to take my pattern piece here. So I'm going to start with this one where this is the front. So I'm going to flip my pattern upside down and place it so that my seam allowance is lined up here. My, I want my edge of my pattern to line up where the edge of my shoulder pad is. I'm just going to stick a few little pins in here just to hold it. Okay, so here we go. And I am just going to lightly draw on here where I need that to be. Okay. So that's the edge I need. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one before I cut them just to make sure that they are not shaped totally differently. You know, stranger things have happened. Oopsie. I'm just going to put you in sideways to hold it a little bit better here. All right, so now I'm going to draw in where it needs to trim. Okay. So just to take a quick look at them and make sure that they look symmetrical. And they do. So that's a good thing. That's a good, a good key that we're on the right track. So now what I just need to do is come back in here and carefully trim them. Okay, so if you want a, this is ending up to be a fairly, you know, narrow shoulder pad, but for my purpose today, it's going to be fine. If you're concerned that you're going to be ending up with a shoulder pad that's way too narrow, start with one that is huge. Start with a big old layered shoulder pad with lots of layers in there that you can pull them out and it's way so wide because cutting down is always easier than making it bigger. So anyhow. Now I have my shoulder pads and uh, I got to shape them. So we're going to go over to the iron. Okay, so I'm over here at my iron and I have my sleeve roll here. And I'm going to be using that to mimic my shoulder. Okay, if you're doing a man's 
um, garment, you probably want a big wider thing like the side of a hand, but for usually for a women's garment, fat sleeve roll is fine. I'm going to place it so that my seam line, my shoulder seam, is at the very top. And I'm going to turn it down, and I am just going to stick a little pin just to very slightly hold it on each side so that I don't burn my fingers. And with the steam iron, and I'm going to move my camera off to the side here. Hang on. Let's see if we can do this without fogging up the camera. With a steam iron, I might need to put more water in. I am. First of all, the steam is going to take off my little marks that I put on. And I'm not pushing down on it. I mean, I can touch it, but I don't really want to push it down because it'll just fuse all of my loftiness out. Once it's hot and steamy, I'm just going to kind of pat it and mold it so it wants to go around that. Let me hit it one more time. Just mold it on there. Make sure my ends are behaving nicely. Okay. And once it's cool enough, I'm going to go ahead and pull my little pins out of it. And now I have a shoulder pad that is molded the way I want. It's as thick as I want. It has the curve that I need to match my garment. And I know that the length of it is fine to match with my um, shoulder width. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to set this in, but I'm not actually going to attach it yet. So first I want you to get a look at her without shoulder pads. Um, and you know, she's a mannequin. She's not a dress form, so she's kind of posing here and everything. But we get an idea. Um, the Claire Schaefer version, this version that she gives the instructions for, does not have shoulder pads in the pattern but she specifies that she wants you to try on the pattern with shoulder pads. So I'm assuming that she wants them either removable or you're wearing a blouse. I am setting permanent shoulder pads into mine, hence this. So um, even though I erased all my marks, I just put a little dot on the fronts of mine just to make it easier. So what I'm gonna do is just place this so you can see how I line it up. And the edge, hang on a second, make sure I can see what I'm doing. The edge of my sleeve, my cut edge of my sleeve, is where I want the cut edge of my shoulder pad to line up. So you can see that with molding the shoulder pad, it lines up perfectly there. So that's really nice. I have, let me get a ruler here. I have about five eighths of an inch here in this shoulder pad loftiness, all right? And that's a quarter inch taller than what it came in, you know, because I can modify it. And I kind of like that, but um, not too sure if my daughter will. We'll see. But again, shoulder pads are coming in. They're going to be good. So let me go ahead and put this one on this side. If it looks like they're too tall, I can use my felting needle, punch it in there some, and it will um, lower itself here. Hang on one sec. So this is her now with shoulder pads. You can see it's a much straighter line here. Um, I am not sure that these narrower pads are going to work because all my padding is right here and then it goes down. Based on what I'm seeing right here, I think I might use the man's shoulder pad because it's a lot wider. See how these, the thickness, it goes much further back. So if I took the man's shoulder pad, okay, and even if I trimmed it back, it's going to go all the way to here. And I think that that's going to give me a much smoother line. So 
I'm going to redo it. I'm going to use these instead. Um, I'll pull these out and I'll use them for something else. These would probably be good for a little blouse or something, you know, and now that they're all formed and everything. I'll save them for that. But I'll go through the same procedure of trimming this according to my shoulder and my pattern that I made and molding it on my seam roll, okay? But I think that this width is actually better than this width for this garment. So, you know, you live and learn, you figure it out. Okay, so anyhow, that's it for today. You know, shoulder pad versus non-shoulder pad, figuring out how to manipulate them, how to size them, how to figure out. And it's good to figure it out at this stage before we go any further. So that's the plan. Hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye.